Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we will be doing part two of our C2C cowl or corner to corner cowl um, or mini scarf if you will, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> cravat maybe. <laughs> all right now what we did in part one, by the way, if you're just joining us new, this is part two of the cow. Um, if you wanted to start part one, I will leave a link to part one in a description box down below. Now, in part one, we, we well, let me just tell you what we need for part two first. You will need, obviously, your mini cow. <laughs> you will need three buttons of your choice. Just make sure these three buttons fit through. Oh, if I can get a nice close-up. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Let's try that close. Is that better? Just make sure they fit through one of your gaps. Okay, any one of your gaps. It doesn't matter which one as long as they fit through a gap. Okay. Oh, sorry, i bring that back out again. So you need three buttons. You will need, obviously, your hook. You will need your scissors, your darning needle. And yes, you will need your measuring tape. Okay. And you probably will still need a full skein for this part of the tutorial. I'm not really sure exactly how much it takes because I can't for the life of me remember how much the border takes. But yours truly has already used, and I'll show you so that you can see where we're at. All right, let's move all this out the way. I've already changed the yarn once there and once down here somewhere. All right, so I can't fit this all in, but anyway, it's all there. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do first before we do anything is we're going to measure our um, work. You should have done, if you have done, that is, I shouldn't say you should have done, if you have done your 51 rows, your 51st row would end up like that where it comes all the way down to the bottom of the shorter side. And I haven't joined that yet because I wanted to show you what we're going to do next, okay? With your 52nd row, that's where we're going to decrease at the top, okay? You still needed to do that 51st row all the way down to here. This is pretty much where you should be on the 51st row, okay? If you are not there, then you better count again, okay? <laughs> okay, or, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just going to close up shop. As long as in the end, when you close up shop, all that adds up, meets up with that, okay? See how I've got it all even there? It's a little bit lopsided only because of my tight crocheting further down, but there you go. So all that right there should even up with that. This is where we're going to start closing up shop now, okay? So what we're going to do is measure your scarf. So all you really need to know, the original, it finishes up at 82 centimetres or um, 22 I think, well, I don't even know what that is now. Let's have a look at 82 centimetres. 82, 82, 82. There. The original finished up at 82 centimetres, roughly around 32 and a half inches, roughly. Okay. Um, but that was the complete scarf. So what we're going to do is measure what we have now. You need to measure it on the longest side. All right. So go all the way along. Measure, measure, measure. And again, it's kind of like a rough measurement, okay? Now, I'm way up to 81. So this is going to be probably a little tiny bit bigger than the other one. <laughs> Not too much. No, actually, it won't because it'll close up right there on the 81st. And then we'll just do a normal border row. So it won't be bigger. I'm telling lies now. I'm just trying to remember how corner to corner works. My brain is shut down. All right. So that's 82 in length and um, whatever it is, 32 inches in, in length as well. All right. Now, question you want to ask yourself is, do you want it to be 82 centimetres in length or 32 inches? Or do you want to make a full length scarf? Now, if you do, just keep going to the length of the scarf that you want. OK, we're stopping here because this is a mini scarf. It's a cowl. It's supposed to be just for around the neck and just to the back of the shoulders a little bit. OK. It's not supposed to be a full length scarf. However, if you wanted the full length scarf, don't close off this row now that we're going to do right now. Okay, just keep going, going, going. And when you get to the length that you like, come back and join us and meet us right here. And we're going to start closing up shop. All right. So no more talk. Well, let's get started. Okay. All right. 
move everything out of the way. Nice little close up. All right, so this is your 51st row. You've come all the way down here, and if you haven't joined yet, you're just going to join quickly. So you just slip stitch in your space like you've been doing all along, pull the loop through. Oops, turn it over without knocking everything off the table like I just did. <laughs> all right, now you're going to slip stitch across. Oh, dearie me, let's try that again. There, you're going to slip stitch across until you get to where you normally do on this side of your um, cowl. So this is normal. Two and three. Okay, now we are chaining up our three. One, two, three. And we're putting our three double crochets in our space. Okay. All the way across like normal. In fact, one, two, three. I'm going to let you go ahead. Do your row all the way across to this second last space and wait for me. You know what? Let's just keep going. And there we go. Oops, too far away. Sorry, guys. There we go. That's better. All right. It's nothing like a corner-to-corner -corner project. It's so quick and easy. It works up very fast. One, two, three. And it actually closes up very fast after a while as well. And have you noticed these rows were really nice and quick because they were only uh, short rows? <laughs> so they worked up quite quickly considering. I mean, it, it still took us a while, but not as much as it would if you were doing a full blanket. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, guys, to join me this Friday for um, History Friday. It's our very first History Friday here at Wow Crochet. You'll be learning lots of interesting information about myself and where my crochet history comes from. One, two, three. And uh, in the near future, we'll be learning about other people and their history. Okay, nearly there. One, two, three. And just keep going all the way across. Don't forget, guys, if you haven't seen the Russian Join Challenge, one, two, three, watch the whole Russian Join Challenge until the end and have a little bit of a giggle. I'll pop the link to that um, challenge. The second link in the description box down below will be the Russian Join Challenge, okay? So, yeah, that's going to be a bit of fun. One, two, three, two. We're nearly there, right to the end, almost to the end. Okay. Now, if you're not near the end like I am, just pause the camera here and then catch up, okay? Because in about two seconds, we're going to be right at the end and that's where we're going to start making a change to your, uh, your cowl. Now, here we are at our space before the end of the row. So we're going to put our normal cluster set in there. So it's one, two and three. Everything's normal in this space. And you go one, two, and three. All right. Now let me show you what we're going to do now. You see, you see our corner here down the, the nice close up side that we've been doing? We're now going to start closing up this side, which means we should actually slip stitch that and then slip stitch across. Like we do when we get here. We get here. We slip stitch and we slip stitch across. Okay, so this is exactly what we're going to do. Okay, and I've pulled a stitch out. Of course I have. Okay, there we go. So ordinarily, if you weren't closing up, you would slip stitch into that space right there as you would when we're going to do that. And then you would chain up your three and do your three double crochets. But you're not going to do that. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work like you've been doing on the other side, on your opposite side there, right? You're going to turn your work 
and you're going to do exactly what you've been doing to the other side you're going to do to this side you're going to slip stitch across your three double crochets okay easy easy you know that part because you've been doing it all along chain one two and three and then you do your three double crochets one two and three and then you slip stitch to your normal cluster set you chain up one two and three and then you do your three double crochets one don't lose a stitch like I just did two I've done it twice I'm doing well today three see that you have closed the corner so now you are going across that way okay easy easy I think it's easy okay if you're finding it fiddly to work with just what you just do is you just wind it up like that like in a roll like a sausage push it to the side and it's a lot easier to work with just a small tip there from me to you <laughs> okay one two three keep going right across your scarf it's very exciting now because when we start closing up shop not only does it um decrease and, and it looks starts to look almost like a scarf one two and three but it also is a lot quicker to finish off each row because we're decreasing we're losing two clusters per side now so that's very very exciting very very exciting one two three and do your cluster set two and three so what i want you to do finish off your cluster sets until you get to your very second last set and meet me there all right here we are at the end of the row we have another cluster set to go so we pop our hook in one two and three do your cluster set like normal then slip stitch into your space like normal okay chain one turn your work and slip stitch across one two whoops without splitting the arm <laughs> three okay so chaining up one two and three doing your cluster set one two three slip stitch to your next one chain one two and three and so on now what I want you to do continue your cluster sets until you get to that very last spot and meet me up there all right here we are again to the near the end of the row we're going to slip stitch into that last spot right there and go one two three two one sorry <laughs> two oops and three all right so we're going to do that again where we slip stitch to that space right there we're not chaining up six anymore we're turning around i'm sorry we're chaining one and then we're turning around slip stitching across one and two and three and then we are chaining up three one two three and then you're doing your normal cluster set in the space one two and three slip stitch to your next stitch right there one two three and do your normal cluster set right there i'm rushing guys because i want to get to that spot where i tell you what we'll do you know what what we'll do you know now what you need to do and you can see now what's happening here okay see how it's closing up it looks like it's not going to be right in the end but it will um oh you know what we'll just keep going 
we'll just keep going. We'll make a long tutorial. It'll be okay. There's nothing wrong for a long tutorial. You'll just get tired and fall asleep. <laughs> One, two, and three. Do another cluster set. Well, you should know where you're going with this now, guys. But I think towards the end, it can get a little confusing. So, um, although we can do a couple of rows. One, two, three. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you how many rows to do. And then we can meet up. I think that's a better idea. Let's do that. What I want you to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want you to do seven rows and then meet me up. Okay? Seven rows will get you... No, actually do five rows and then meet me up, all right? Okay, you should be at the end of your fifth row, okay? Slip stitch into that space right there, chain one. Before you turn, you should have one, two, three, four cluster sets left. If you haven't, get yourself to four cluster sets and meet us up. Okay, so now we are going to slip stitch across like normal. One, two, and three. Oh, it's starting to close up shop. It's very, very close now, isn't it, guys? One, two, three. Do your three double crochets. And three. Slip stitch to your next. One, two, three. Two. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll slow it down. When I'm off air, I tend to go really fast to catch up. <laughs> then I forget and slow. I forget to slow down. Three and four, and then slip stitch to your next one, two, three. And yours truly is playing a little bit of yarn chicken. See, <laughs> I'm hoping I'll make it. I will. I will make it to you at the end of the row. We're doing our last cluster set in that space. Two, three, and four. Then we are slip stitching on the cluster set like we normally do. Turn our work. Slip stitch across like normal. One, two, and three chain one two and three and your normal cluster set in there oh look how small the rows are now <laughs> two cluster sets dearie me slip stitch to your next one chain one two three and then do your normal cluster set Slip stitch to your set there, chain one, turn your work. All right, slip stitching across one, two, we're getting to the end, three, chain one, two, and three. Now, this is an interesting part. We're going to do a normal cluster set like you would normally. But this is actually nearing the actual end of the row. It's actually the end of the row. Okay, so do your normal cluster set. Two, three, and my fourth one all together. Now, we slip stitch into that normal space like you would normally. Chain one like you would normally. Turn your work like you would normally and just slip stitch across one two and three however we still have that spot there usually we chain up and then we you know do our cluster set while well, we're at the end of the row so all you're going to do is slip stitch into the space right there pull a loop through and then just pull up a loop that's it you have finished the main part of your corner to corner we finished the corner to corner part, but we are going to do a border. Yes, we are. And I'm hoping to get the border fitted in this particular tutorial. I don't really want to do a part three of this tutorial. I just want to leave it as part one and two, and that's it. All right. So how we're going to start our border. Normally, 
I would have cast off there, finished off, and I would have washed and blocked my piece, and then I would have started on a border. That is what I would do normally. However, because I'm doing the tutorial, I've decided not to worry about that. Okay, so where do we start? Okay, we've done our chain. Yes, what we're going to do is put a single crochet in that corner. Okay, chain one and two. Skip the whole set, jump into the next big space you see. So you skip that whole set there, jump into the space with a single crochet. Okay, chain one and two, jump into your next space with a single crochet. I was going to do slip stitches, but I've decided to do single crochets. It'll make the item a little bit thicker. Chain one and two, jump into your next space with a single crochet chain one and two single crochet so one two skip and go into your next space one two skip next all right so i'm going to let you go ahead and do that all the way until you get to the space before the corner continue and I will meet you up when you get to that space okay all right so here we are at the end of the row this is blurring sorry guys now we need to do a single crochet in that space before the corner so single crochet in that little space there chain one and two now with your corner you actually need to pop your hook in a stitch okay like that in a stitch anywhere where you can find a stitch right there oh dear me right there all right see the stitch and that's one then you chain one and two and you pop your hook straight back into that same stitch okay like so yes then you chain one and two now this is the bottom side of your work but you still can find those spaces in between and that's where you need to pop your single crochets so you've got one there okay now you're going to skip all of that all of that and jump straight into your next space okay chain one and two same into the next one and two 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 next one two next one two next nearly there one and two and this is the space before the corner you're going to pop your hook in and do a normal single crochet chain one and two now remember before you needed to find a, a space on your corner you need to do the same with this now this is the corner that has our little tail end if you haven't already weaved it in like me it'll still be sitting there um, it might help you you can probably pop your hook in that same stitch Let's see if you can get a, a little bit of a thickness happening though that's better all right and you do your normal single crochet chain one and two and do your single crochet in the same stitch okay now you chain one and two and you miss that all of that cluster set jump into your next space with your single crochet one and two and same with the next and so on and so forth and the rest of it okay so what we're going to do what i want you to do now is continue oh sorry about that continue all the way around until you get to the next corner and meet me there okay all right so here we are at the end of the row and i have the two clusters left i've chained my two i'm going to do a normal single crochet in the space before the, the last cluster then chain one and two and remember what we did before we looked for a little 
chain set and we slip stitch into one of the stitches not into the space but into one of those stitches right there and you're doing your single crochet not a slip stitch sorry guys I think I said slip stitch I meant single crochet and then one and two and then single crochet in the same space chain one and two now jump into your very next space of the cluster set right there one and two go to the next one and two next one two next i think this is the end of the row soon one two which is good i'll explain why in a minute one two one two by the way this, the row we're working on now one two is actually the right side of your work if that helps one two one two all right we're nearly there one two jump into the next one two now remember that stitch right there we're not going to do anything with it yet we're going to jump straight into the corner we're not going to be jumping into stitches or anything we're just going to jump into the corner like you were jumping into the next space do your single crochet chain one and two and slip stitch at the top of that single crochet that we first made oh i'll get a nice close-up for you sorry guys all right so we're going to slip stitch in the top of that first single crochet right there okay pull the loop through and there you go that is one row complete of your border now we are going to do the final row of the border yay <laughs> all right so what we're going to do because we are still in the corner but we don't want to start in the corner okay we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch right there nice tight stitch of mine so slip stitch then we're going to slip stitch into that space okay there then we chain up one and we're going to put a half double crochet in the same space one two now if you had a um, stitch marker you could place it there to remind you it's probably the best thing for you to do pop it in the first half double crochet you did just reminds you that that is the end of the row and you, you need that for this this particular round I should have mentioned earlier you don't have to if you are um, an avid crocheter or you're already an intermediate crocheter but if you are new you might need that all right so we are going to see that space and every big space you come to that we've made right there and right there the chain two space that we made you're going to jump into every one of those spaces with two half double crochets and do one more okay so yarn over hook pop it in your very next space now not this space down here you need the chain the chain two space that we made in the first row okay so right there the very first space you see one and two all right and keep doing this all the way across until you get to your corner and I will explain what you have to do there all right so that's your half doubles all the way across okay till you get to right there or even we'll say the space right before it and I'll meet you up okay all right here we are at the second last space there and then there's another space just before the corner okay a little bit tricky but it is there okay so we're going to do a normal two half doubles in the in that space two half doubles in the space before the corner one and two now in the corner we are going to do three half double crochets in there one two and three and what that's going to do is 
it's actually going to form your corner. Now when we go into our next space, which is right there, we're only going to be putting our normal two half double crochets. One and two. Make sure you get into that one right there. Don't skip over it. Okay. <clears throat> two half doubles in your next space. Two half doubles in your next space. And two in your next and so on so what we will do we'll get to the end of this side here just this little part the bottom bit I think it might have been the bottom bit or the top bit no it's the bottom bit and then I'll show you what you can do and you can head off on your own in a minute and do the rest by the way I lost a yarn chicken <laughs> I lost a yarn chicken right there See, threads all over the place. Ah, oh, well, it happens. Never mind. Two in your next space. One and two. And two in your next and so on and so forth. And two in your next. One and two. Now, we are at the end of this row. We still have that space there that we need to put in two half doubles, which we'll do now. One and two but we have our corner stitch in here remember the chain not the space right there but just above it just above it like that see that space that's the space we put our single crochet chain to single crochet in in the bottom in this bottom row now we are going to pop in our three half doubles in that corner so right there okay one two and three now we turn our work and we put our next two half doubles in that space right there the big space so one and two two half doubles in your very next space which is right there one and two two halves in the next one and two and let's have a look see what we're doing all right okay all right here we are you did all of that row see how nice it looks the border has given it a nice straight look you did the corner okay you did the first corner now you've done the second corner now i want you to complete this row all the way to this corner complete that corner get to the let's get a nice close up again get to the space right here just before your corner and meet me up okay and then we'll sort out what we're going to do next all righty here we are at the end of the row and yours truly has that space right there that's the very last cluster set space and then i have a corner so i'm going to do that last cluster set of two half double crochets that we've been doing all along and then the corner, remember we've been putting our three half doubles in the corner. One, two, and three. Now this is where I asked you to pop in your stitch marker because you are going to slip stitch to the top of that chain space, or not the chain space, the actual stitch where your stitch marker is. Okay, so you're going to slip stitch is just your normal pop your hook in the little space pull loop through and pull it through there pull up a loop get very excited guys because that is the end of your crochet rounds yay <laughs> that is your border row those two rows as simple as they are are your border rows yay <laughs> now before we go on with buttons make sure you go ahead and weave in all your ends okay you can do that off air later if you like now the thing you need to remember is the right side to the wrong side now we just pulled that loop through if you want to really remember the right side just grab a stitch marker and see where that top of that thread is right that's where you can just remind yourself that this is the right side the reason is because you need to pop the buttons on the right side of your work all right so let's say if 
the buttons were going there, whoops, let's say if the buttons were going there, they need to go here. They don't go on that side, they go on this side. All right. So now, buttons, buttons, buttons. Now, I've made the project, I'm trying to keep it all in frame, but I can't, long enough for you to keep your buttons as high as you want them to go. However, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to pop my buttons on this side right here where the stitch marker is. That way it reminds me that it's already done. Now, um, actually, no, actually, when we put it that way, I'm trying to think of how girls wear their buttons. <laughs> now, if you're making for a man, <laughs> your buttons go on that side. But if you're making for a woman, your buttons go on this side. Is that right? Now, look at my previous. Yes, the buttons will go on this side here. Okay, now turn your work around to face you so there's your two fronts i don't know if i can get it all in facing you all right your two fronts are facing you the buttons go here all right your first button should actually go this is how you know where to put your buttons actually i've got that little bit of leftover thread there what you need to do first before you do anything guys is to thread your needle all right now pop your come on mary get it right Pop your pieces together like that. Your first button should go on your second cluster set. There's your first cluster set. There's your second. Okay. Anywhere on that second cluster set. So when it closes up, it's right at the bottom there. And then we can work out where the rest go. So just pop your thread through anywhere on that second cluster set. Get that out of the way. So just anywhere you want through the actual stitch though. Oh, sorry, that's too far. Sorry, guys. I'll move that out of the way. So you need it to go through an actual stitch. So you're kind of splitting the yarn. Why is it so dark and dismal now? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't even know what happened there. I moved it out of the way and everything went weird. So go through the actual stitch right there. Pull up a loop. Don't pull it all the way through because we didn't knot it. Okay, just leave a nice long tail at the back. Okay, now... You just pop your needle back in through another section of that stitch. Actually, yeah, but another section of the stitch, doesn't matter where. Just check the back, make sure you haven't stuck it through the other thread there. Now do it again, pop it through another section. This is just going to reinforce it so it doesn't come undone. This is the part where you grab your button, pop it in any one of your... Um, holes. I've got four holes. I don't know if you've got four or two. It doesn't matter either way. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Pop your needle through the other hole, the second or the third or whatever you want to do. Right. And then before you pull the thread through, find the space on that same stitch that you were threading and just pull that thread through and it'll just tighten up your button right there okay now what I want you to do is to go through and re-thread and put your needle through one of the other holes okay easy easy this part is easy this is the fun bit guys because this is the part that you know is going to finish off your work pop it through the hole make sure you're not splitting this thing right here because you're going to need this to tie your button up or you tie your thread off in a minute Okay, now put it through another hole. If you've got four buttons like me, pop it through, four hole buttons I should say, pop it through another hole right there and then pop it through a space that you haven't gone over. Like I went over those two spaces, pop it through that space. If, if you have got two holes, just pull it through one more time and you're done. Okay, and now you've got to do the other side right there for a four hole button and pop it through the opposite side so all four sections have a bit of strand on it that's what a four button holes for okay now take out your oh i can leave a thread in there if you like I can leave a, a needle in there but you have to literally tie a little knot like that just one um yeah we'll just do one no no we'll do another one we'll do another one just to be safe all right so tie a knot, that's not going to come undone now. All right, 
and just oh so far away sorry guys do what we usually do weave in your ends splitting your yarn okay so split 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 go back another way split 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 like that and that's not going to come undone that's done all right that one there is done but you need to weave in the opposite side that we just knotted see that other side of the knot you need to weave that in too because that may come undone it shouldn't it's pretty reinforced but it may come undone and you know stranger things have happened i suppose okay here we go oh i'm so far away sorry guys and just weaving if i can make that tail a little bit shorter that might help there you go weaving all the way through making sure you can't see the needle on this side otherwise you'll be able to see a thread <laughs> oh that was a bit tight i don't even need to weave in that anymore because that was a very very tight stitch there and that's not going to come undone if even if i wanted to too <laughs> all right okay so that's your first button yes your very first button Ta -da! you don't even need to have this here anymore because you've already got one button on that's to show you that's the right side now you need to get your second and your third on okay so oh oh making a mess here i'm not even going to measure with measurements all i'm going to do and this is the joy of corner to corner so you can see it is count four cluster sets up one two three four now before we do that thread your needle again because you're going to do this again okay so all i'm going to do is count four cluster sets up so it's the button is on that second cluster set yeah we're going to go one two three and four just pop your needle in the middle of your stitch there one of the stitches i get a nice close up there right there and pull up a loop make sure you've got your tail end still down there because you need to tie that off again um oh sorry about that i'm messing up aren't i pop it through oops not too far my um tail end is a little bit too short <laughs> and back through again all right now you grab your button pop it in in one of the holes and you do exactly what you did before and there you go pop it through again find another space on your button pop it through another space making sure you're not splitting this thread here because i've done that many times before i'm speaking through experience there <laughs> Oh, I've done it so many times before. It's not funny. Now we're going to find another space. Pulling it through. And another space. The fourth one or the third one. Oh, look, I've done that. See, I've split it. See, I'm talking through experience and I split it. How about that? All right, now you find yet another space. Now it's the very last space, which is this one across here. Sorry if it's too far away for you guys. Okay. Pop that in the last space. And we are set. That's it. Oh, I've pulled the thread out. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I've got to weave that in. So what I'm going to do, tie that in a knot. And I'm going to weave this in off air later. So I want to show you what to do next. All right. So you've done your one, two, three, four cluster sets. Hang on. One, two, three, four cluster sets. Now count one, two, three, four cluster sets. Put your next button. And let's just pretend these buttons are on. And let's pretend all my threads are weaved in. Then you just find a space on the other side that matches your cluster set oh i think i've gone it through the wrong oh no that's the right space that matches your cluster set 
Okay, there's your one button. If I can get it through this one. It's funny, it goes through one or not the other. There it goes. And there's your other. Okay, do the same with your third button. And there you go. Ta-da! <laughs> That's your scarf done now. Now, the other thing is two. See that? Let's pretend, let's pretend <laughs> that um, it's all nice and soft because you've got to wash it. Yeah, you've got to wash it. That is how you'll wear it around your neck. Okay, so you've got plenty of space. If you wanted your scarf longer, like I said, you could have gone longer, um, then you need to adjust the buttons to suit you. Okay, um, but that's about it. That's your scarf done, my dears. All I want you to do right now is to sew that other button up Weave in all your ends and you, my dears, are done. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I will actually be advertising uh, this particular cowl on the weekend. I'll be wearing it on either the my live or on my um, History Friday coming this Friday, one or the other. So you'll get to see what it looks like on. I can't wear it on for too long because yours truly can't wear wool, as most of my regulars would know. But I will pop it on just so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and in reference to the honey cow, I gave that away to my sister, <laughs> but she's coming up on the weekend and we're going to be able to uh, take a couple of photos. I might even get a little bit of video footage of her wearing it. She'd like that actually, <laughs> It'd be part of my videos. And, um, and you can see what the honey cow looked like, okay? If you have not tried the honey cow and you would like to, it's a little bit more intricate, uh, it's a little bit more for um, the avid crocheters. You know, so if you are joining us new, the honey cow will be quite difficult. Not as easy as this. This was easy. It's not completely easy to the very, very brand new crocheter, but it was easier than doing the honey cow. I mean, how gorgeous does it look? I use the grey buttons just for fun because we got a tinge of grey in each of my um, little pink threads there. And um, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. So I will pop this on the weekend or Friday um, and you can get to see it in full. Don't forget to weave in all your ends, add your last button. My name is Mary. This is Well Crochet. Thank you for watching and guess what, guys? Ciao for now.